the American political system. Uh, let's start with checks and balances, <clears throat> which is really the phrase Americans use to describe uh, the three branches of government, the uh, separation of power, uh, of, of government power, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. Uh, by the way, uh, this system with three branches exists both for federal government and state government. All the 50 states have uh, their executive, legislative, judicial, judicial branches as well. Uh, the executive on the federal level, is the president. I have pictures here of both the front and the back of the White House, where the president lives. So he is the executive branch of government. Uh, for the, uh, the 50 states, they have governors who are kind of there, uh, the president in the states. And the executive <laughs> executes laws, you know, puts laws into action, runs the administration. Uh, the administration is what we call it, so Barack Obama uh, his administration is called the Obama administration, and they run the country uh, as the executive branch of government. The legislature, that, that's the legislative branch, uh, that's the, uh, the, the lawmakers. So on the federal level, that's U.S. Congress, while the states have their own state legislatures. Uh, U.S. Congress, by the way, is divided into two uh, houses or chambers of Congress. I'll describe those uh, soon enough. Uh, the judiciary, the judicial branch of government, uh, on the federal level is the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, and all the other states have their own state Supreme Courts. Uh, this, of course, is the, uh, the Supreme Court building, the U.S. Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C., and it's uh, nine uh, uh, justices, Supreme Court justices. And the judiciary can challenge and uphold, uh, challenge or uphold, I should say, laws by interpreting the Constitution. They are sort of the final interpreters of the Constitution, the U.S. Supreme Court, at least. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> U.S. Congress now, th this is the building. It's called the United States Capitol, but it houses U.S. Congress. Uh, and Congress is a bicameral legislature. That means it has two chambers or houses, uh, which are... Uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate, the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. Uh, and the difference is there are 435 representatives, usually just called congressmen, uh, in uh, the House of Representatives, and there are exactly 100 uh, senators. And the reasoning here is that a, a, se a senator, I should say, there are always two senators for each state. That's why it's exactly 100 senators now, while uh, representatives, or co which are called congressmen, uh, they represent congressional districts, which there are many of. And uh, these lawmakers, they vote on legislation, either passing a bill, which is called enacting it, or uh, repealing existing laws. They can remove laws. Uh, a bill, a uh, proposed law is rather what it is, is sent back and forth between the two chambers until it's passed by both by both houses. And then it's sent to the White House, I should say, because uh, the uh, president, he is the one who has to sign the legislation to actually make it law. But he can choose to not sign it, and that means to veto it, right? And then it does not become law. But a two-thirds majority in Congress can override a presidential veto. The U.S. Supreme Court is the highest court in the country and the final interpreter of a constitutional law, and the nine Supreme Court justices who are appointed, uh, they are, not, and I should say, nominated by the president and confirmed by the Senate, and, and thusly uh, sit for life uh, until they retire or die in office, and uh, will be replaced by a new justice uh, re nominated by the president and confirmed by the Senate. Uh, they determine whether a law is constitutional or not, is the simplest way of describing uh, the uh, role of the Supreme Court. A little uh, something here about the U.S. Constitution and the U.S. Bill of Rights. Uh, these are the ten original amendments to the Constitution, which are called the Bill of Rights. Pa and uh, for instance, uh, 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 an amendment to the Constitution uh, can be created. It's not just these original ten. There, there are more than that, and there can be new ones as long as they are passed by two thirds of Congress and ratified by the legislature of uh, three fourths of the states. 
The First Amendment, by the way, is the freedom of religion and speech and press and uh, assembly. The second is uh, the freedom to bear arms, in other words, guns. And the eighth is uh, a, a, an amendment against cruel and unusual punishment, which is interesting uh, given that the United States and many states in the United States practice uh, capital punishment, the death penalty, even though that is kind of unusual in the West today. The Tenth Amendment uh, has to do with states' rights. It basically says that uh, any uh, duty or right or something not uh, ascribed or not given to the federal government in the Constitution uh, passes to uh, the state government as a state right. The Thirteenth Amendment, obviously not among the original ten in the Bill of Rights, is the one that abolished slavery uh, during uh, Abraham Lincoln. And the Eighteenth uh, was the uh, was the prohibition of alcohol between 1920 and 1933. That's actually an example of an amendment that was later repealed, so it only existed between 20 and 33. And the Nineteenth Amendment, that is the amendment that gave women the right to vote in America. A little bit about general elections here. A uh, quick uh, thing to remember: first Tuesday after after November second, uh, in uh, in every two years, there is an election, a general election in the United States. Congressional and presidential elections are held on the same day, and that's every four years. Presidential elections every four years. Uh, but in addition to that, there are midterms, which are then two years later, in between the presidential uh, elections which are also congressional elections. So basically, congressional elections are every two years, and presidential elections every four years, but then the presidential and congressional elections are on the same day, and these are always in November. Um, senators represent the states, two for each, and they have six-year terms, uh, while representatives or congressmen, they represent one congressional district each. And of course, then there are more congressional districts in very populous states, because each congressional district is supposed to have about the same number of people in them. So there are, there are a few states which only have one congressional district for the entire state, uh, about 700,000 people in each. These are all the congressional districts colored so that you can tell them apart. Uh, the president is elected by electoral vote, not popular vote. Uh, what, what that means is, uh, the, it, in order to become president, you need to uh, sort of get a majority of all of these numbers together. In order to do that, you get a majority of the votes. Not even the majority, really, but, but the plurality of the votes. Uh, you need to get more votes than the other guy in uh, one state, and then you get all of these numbers, and that's the electoral vote. If you're very quick now, you'll understand that uh, these uh, these numbers, as you can tell, the more populous states have a larger number because these numbers correspond to the amount of congressmen plus the two senators. That's why the lowest number is three, which is states with they're so uh, have so few people. They are have only one congressional district, and then of course they have two senators. There are 538 electoral votes between the 50 states, and you need 270 to win, and it's a first-past-the-post system. You need to get a plurality. You, get, you need to get more than the other guy in one uh, state each in order to get all the numbers there, all the electoral votes. And this, by the way, shows you uh, <laughs> the uh, map. This is actually from the 2004 election. The blue is the Democratic candidate, John Kerry, who lost. Uh, the red it was George W. Bush, who won in 2004. And you can tell this uh, stretched map shows the more uh, electorally heavy uh, states as larger. Uh, thanks for watching, and my next video is on American party politics, so make sure you catch that one as well.